I'm Joke Caviar and I'm a writer and a poet and I'm also an activist and uh, the thing that I do most is take action against migration policy of uh, the Netherlands and the fortress of Europe. Last year, September the 13th, I was arrested and um, this happened in the morning and special police force came uh, of the National Recherche they were called and um, they came to arrest me and they did a house search and the charge was incitement and uh, with a terrorist intent and I, I heard that uh, the, the thing with the terrorist intent I only heard when I was in jail already for a day and um, they did a house search and they searched the whole house and they searched for more than just proof for uh, incitement which is about my texts on the internet and my articles and uh, what they did they searched for for information on my contacts and people that I know and my whereabouts and stuff like that so there's also something more going on than just the incitement charge against me it's also about more activists against immigration policy in the Netherlands so. <laughs> And what was the pretext article you wrote? Uh, what was about the article? Why they was uh, so uh, upset about it? To well, actually there were four. Uh, when I was interrogated, when I was in jail, um, they were talking about they have more, more than just the four. And then they read to me the, the, the parts of the text that they thought were inciting. And after I was released, uh, public prosecution, they released a press release uh, announcing that an activist had been arrested on charges of incitement for four texts on the internet. So there were four texts that they, they took as, a, as, as the main charge. And um, one text is about uh, RARA. Uh, I don't know if you know what RARA is. RARA was the action group in the 90s and 80s that burned down, for example, uh, the, the, the big uh, uh, the, the macro uh, company for its involvement in uh, apartheid in South Africa. And um, I wrote about, about RARA because uh, one ex-member of RARA who had been prosecuted at the time had been interviewed on TV and also uh, another ex-activist had, had been interviewed at the time who had later become a, 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 a politician. Um, so these two, they were both interviewed and I wrote an article about that and about RARA and one of the things I said was that it's time that a new generation take over the torch from RARA and they thought that was incitement, that's inciting to, to arson. And one other thing I wrote was about uh, the Minister of Immigration, Leers. Um, a man had set himself on fire on the Dam Square in, in Amsterdam. And this was, a, this was a refugee, he was refused and was threatened with uh, deportation. And the man set fire to himself on Dam Square and he died because of that. And Leers had said that he felt not responsible. It had nothing to do with him or with the policy. And uh, one other thing at the same time that happened was that uh, he had said that uh, uh, immigration officers had been intimidated by activists. And then he had said, well, if they want to, well, if, if they should not go to, to my people to work for me, if they want to go somewhere, they, they got to come to me. So I wrote a whole piece about, you know, the man burning himself and Leo's not feeling responsible and that he, he said that, well, then they have to come to me. And then I concluded, well, if Leo's is inviting us to come to him, let's go to him. Who is coming along to go to Leo's? And they concluded that that meant uh, incitement to commit violence against the Minister of Immigration. So these were two articles. One other was about uh, why is there no um, uprising in the Netherlands? And in that one, I, for example, wrote uh, uh, who would do that? Who would uh, burn down the IND, for example, and um, stuff like that? And so they consider that would be uh, a call out for, for setting fire to the IND and you know, stuff like that. The thing I felt most was, was the feeling that they tried to shut me up. And I felt gagged, actually, like... Uh -huh. And um, they released me after three days, which I did not expect. I thought they would keep me for months. They did not. I was surprised at that. And I was, I was you know, preparing myself for a long term. And um, then they let me go. And after a week, the, um, the prosecution, they called my lawyer and they said, we will arrest her again because 
the texts are still online and then what I did was I published an article saying the public prosecution can just forget about that. I am not going to censor myself. Uh, these are my texts and censoring myself would be like, like, like you know, taking a hand off your body, you know, it's, it's part of me. I'm not going to censor myself. If they want censorship, they've got to do it themselves. And I kept saying that all the time. And one other thing they did was they said, um, we will watch every new text that you write and published. And so it was, at first it was like, you know, you want to write and you know they're watching you closely. You know, that's hard. And then I got over that, so. I yeah, you wrote, I think, a lot of texts, uh, yes, actually. Yes, I wrote a lot more after that. And uh, I just decided, you know, fuck it. I mean, if they want to if, if charge me with incitement, even when a text is not really that incite, inciting, I might just as well, you know, continue. Because there's no telling, whatever you write, whether they will think it's incitement or not. So if there's no telling, why should you be careful at all? So, I mean, and I just couldn't, I just cannot hold myself back. I just can't. So I continued and I kept my website online. And then three months later, and all this time they threatened me, right? You know, we will arrest you again because it's still online. So I was like expecting every day they might show up again. And then they took the website offline on December 7th. And um, friends of mine, some geeks, they put the website back online within a day. And by that time already a lot of mirrors had been made and a lot of copies of the text that, 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 that it was all about have been spread over the internet and, and I haven't had that much readers ever, <laughs> ever you know, before. So actually what, what the public prosecution has reached is that a lot more people started reading those texts that were in fact already a bit old. There were articles that were like, one was from 2008, one from 2009, one from 2010, and 2011 one. So, I mean, most of them had already, you know, I wrote new articles after that. So, they were old. I mean, it's, it's articles about actuality. So, something happens, I write, you know. Something happens again, I write. So, I mean, you know, they, 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 they got just the opposite of what they wanted. And... Um, they must be pretty pissed off by now because the website is back online and it's been like that already for five or six weeks now. And it is likely that they will arrest me again because we put the, they put the thing back online. Are you not afraid uh, uh, you, uh, that they will arrest you for longer? And uh, I don't know, like, uh, do you think that uh, how uh, we can prevent it uh, to well, happen? Or, uh, uh, I, I, I'm actually expecting that they will, that they will arrest me again. It's only the question when. I mean, it could be tomorrow, but they could also like take forever and be there in like after two months or something because they do they, they do take their time clearly because when the first judge came, they charged me with this incitement during a period that they started counting November the 18th, 2010. And they came on September the 13th, 2011. So it took them 10 months of investigating or whatever they were doing before they actually did something. And then after I refused to take it offline, it took them three months to decide and actually take the website online themselves. So they take their time. And, uh, you know, it, it might just be a while before they do something again. It might be tomorrow. And that's difficult because, you know, every appointment you make, you think, I might not be there. Mm. So I have to make precautions. You know, I might not be there, so if I'm not there, then that, that person will take care of it, or, you know, I will make sure that things that I make or do, that other people can take over when I'm not there. Because I think if they arrest me again, it will be for longer. And um, I think it's inevitable, so... But you know, part of me is fucked up about that, and part of me is like, yeah, what can I do? <laughs> the resistance is what keeps me going, mm -hmm. and other people showing solidarity by copying the text, by making mirrors. Uh, it's a great manifestation tonight, you know, stuff like that that keeps me going. Mm -hmm. I think if I give up, it, it, it shows to them that they can bring people down. 
And if, if I give up, and a lot of people look at me like, what's she doing? And uh, I hear a lot of people take courage from that. And um, so I feel responsible for myself, but also a bit like for people who are watching this. I mean, and I also feel like, you know, if, if, if the police and, and the Ministry of Justice and the, the, the Secret Service can see that they can bring me down and I'm pretty strong, they, will, they might think, well, if we can bring her down, we can bring the rest down. You know, it's, it's, for them it's the first step because I'm, I'm like the first one they take because I'm easy to take because I'm well known, I have a website, I'm public, I'm, uh, you know, I'm easy to get and uh, some of the people are hard to get, they are more hidden, they maybe, maybe not be known already to me, so careful, or maybe not careful, I don't know. Um, I, I, they, they use me as a, as a, a, a as a practice, a th target practice, so to mm -hmm. speak. And uh, I don't want to give in, you know. I hope they made mistake and uh, they um, already uh, realizing that by um, closing you down, uh, they made uh, a lot of. Uh, uh, they spread uh, this uh, message what they arrest you for much wider. And by uh, I hope they realizing, uh, and that's I think it may happen that if they will uh, uh, close you down, they would uh, create even more resistance. They would yes. uh, make you a hero from you, and yes. that's you know like um, that's uh, I think uh, I hope it's the reason that's why uh, they don't lock you down, yes. and uh, they you will still. <laughs> Yeah. Can keep going. Yeah. I, hope. I hope so. I hope. Mm -hmm. I hope this creates resistance. And uh, uh, one way of not creating resistance is to give up. So I want to create resistance, and I also need to resist myself. I would feel totally helpless. I would feel totally um, how you say it in English, um, useless. I would feel um, um, I, I could not live with myself giving up. I just can't. I just can't. I, especially, it's important what you are doing. Yes, uh, it's, uh, I did, definitely, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I think so. If I see the reactions of people who, who I don't know on the internet, even like so-called normal people, you know, not activists, just people, if I see the way they react, you know, I think, well, you know, it's good people they start discussing things, they start thinking about things, they read my, my text, that they would never have read it, this has not happened, and if I give up, that will not happen anymore. There will be no more spreading of the texts if, if I just give up, you know, it will be the end of it. So I'm like, you know, if I, if I, if I don't give up, it will continue, you know, the struggle will continue and we will talk about it and read it and it will go on. And uh, I hope it will, it will bring strength into not just me, but other people as well. And, um, because, you know, I, I don't want to be like an example or a martyr or a hero or anything, but but I mean, it, it, it is something that happens. People are looking at you. You know, mm. what, what are you doing? And um, so, but you know, most of it is, is just for me because I just can't stand to give up. Okay. It, uh, I have to to, to, to fight this. To, you know, not just for me, but you know, against against capitalism, against migration control, against repression. I mean, I've always been like that my whole life. So. I mean, even in jail, I'm not giving up, you know. I've been in jail before, so that's not the first time. So I've been there, and um, I'm not giving up on the inside as well, so that's just me. Yeah, I heard you also wrote uh, texts in jail, so... Yes, and I published them on the internet by sending letters, and, uh, and then somebody else typed it and published it. And then at some point I heard that the guards were talking about it, you know, some, some, some women who were cleaning the guards' office as, as a job, you know, in jail, they told me that they saw the guards looking on the internet, reading what I wrote, and, uh, and apparently they could not do anything about it, because I was just doing time. There was no, no, uh, no I was not uh, remounted or anything, so, you know, they could not just forbid me to, to write. Well, it's, it's not like there's freedom of speech inside jail. I had a big conflict yeah, about yeah, that as well. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah, at one point I, I got locked down because I, I, I put something on the wall and I refused to take that away. So, you know, you know mm. inside it goes on, you know. Well, let's beat the borders.